There is no need to fear the sphere anymore. Today's show is about spheres for dummies. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools. This eucalyptus gum vein pearl, <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time today, it's just phenomenal. The cracks and shapes in it are really neat. But what I've been aiming for here is I want to make a blank that's four inches square and probably about five inches long because that's going to be the start to how you make a very simple and successful sphere. So obviously the blank is mounted between centers and the first thing I want to do is bring this down to a cylinder so I'm going to use my small CI2 easy wood tool with the square edge to do that. Turn this on. I have a face mask on simply because it's going to get a little chippy at points in here and I don't want to get hit in the face. Got to protect the beauty. <laughs> So I have my calipers and I'm just checking my diameter here. This is really hard wood. This stuff has been in my shop for years. You want to use dry wood for this project, by the way. So I'm going to take this diameter and then what I want to do is transfer it over to here. So we're going to find the best looking grain and gum veins or whatever we have. So I'm going to probably lean a little bit down. Yeah, everything's good. I'm not going to worry about that much. <laughs> so we're going to take it here, make a big old mark, take it here make a big old mark and then what we'll do is we're going to part it down to that size so I need to get my marks on here real quick there's my other one and a really cool thing is easy wood now has come out with a new parting tool it's the same process as before where you have a carbide tip in here but now this whole piece comes out so you don't have to worry about this thing falling out and replacing that you replace this whole piece really easy I like it a lot let me find some goggles that actually work I had my cheaters on because I had to look at some stuff really close up a second ago <laughs> here we go but anyway I just want to part this off on the ends and get the cylinder the same length as the width After nipping those ends off, we have our perfect cylinder, right? It's just as wide as it is thick, or just as long as it is tall, or it's the same this way as that way, okay? Now, where does the spheres for dummies come in, right? <laughs> this system right here, made by Thomas Hackle in Germany. The guy is a genius. Now, I'll put a link to where you can get to his website. It will translate into English if you need to, and then try to buy one from him. I think I was his first overseas sale and I scared him because there were shipping charges that he thought were really crazy, but I didn't mind. So these help you put this blank on the lathe and turn the piece. It's going to be really fun. Let me show you how it works. Now you see I have two of the pieces mounted in here. This is actually three pieces. This is a live center here, four pieces. <laughs> And a ring here and you have this live center and this drive center what's really unique about these is that this face is curved this face is flat and the same thing over here the curved faces go to the curved surface of your of your cylinder so you better make sure that matches up now Thomas said you can do between I think 100 millimeters to 50 millimeters in inches I think that's around a little bit less than four <laughs> to about uh, two and a half, something like that. Uh, Google it, you'll find out. Anyway, <laughs> whoop, off camera. Here's my curved side, here's my cylinder, and see how that fits in there? It follows the shape like that. So now, do not make the mistake and put the flat in. 
pull that like so. So now I'm going to bring this uh, tailstock in like so. I'm going to move my hand, but I want to kind of push this to where it goes in. I feel it seating and then I bring this up and now we're pretty good and centered. So we're going to have to turn a tenon on this end right away because that's what that ring is for. That's a safety measure, right? But I want to make sure nothing is hitting the tool rest here. I'll even bring it in this way a little bit so I can get the tenon done. But this is where the coolness of this whole jig comes from. Let me get my face mask on and turn this on. And I'll turn it on slowly. But when you're looking down, okay, what appears before your eyes in the middle but a cylinder? The whole idea is we're just going to cut away the stuff that's flashing around, the edges. It's the coolest thing because you can use a jig and do this, but this allows you to still have some control and use a tool and feel like you've done a little bit of handwork, a little bit of your own effort is into it rather than have a jig do it for you. So I'm going to take the Easywood tool again, bring up the speed, and I'm going to work on my tenon on this end right here and just very carefully go in. Make contact with the wood, little bites at a time. Sneaking up on it. The reason we have to have the tenon on here is that we don't want the piece of wood to jar and come out. So I've got a little bit more to go there. You don't want to take this all the way down to the metal like I have a couple times. That's too far. <laughs> Sneak in again. See how that works. If you take it too far and this doesn't jam on, that's almost a jam. I can take a little bit of blue tape and put on there and hold it in place and then I'm good. Which I'm gonna go get some right now. My blue tape looks really good right there. So the first step you want to do is you want to start removing the wood, like I said, but I want to just do it in increments. So it's just kind of like doing the inside of a bowl. I'm going to step my way over a little bit at a time and not make a hero cut all at once. I just want to nibble away at this side and then I'll move the tool rest in a minute and work my way over to the other side. So you just kind of repeat this little chopping motion, come back, reset, and do it again. My idea is not to make the sphere perfect at this moment, it's just to get close to the surface of it. And the entire time I'm doing this, I'm watching the horizon up here where you see the ghosting of the sphere swinging by. That way I know I'm not getting into the solid wood yet. Robust, besides making one of the best lays on the planet, <laughs> also makes some of the best tool rest you'll ever find too. And this is a beautiful curved one which is going to help me make the shape around the ball. I think that is really awesome. And by the way, I am a dealer in case you're looking to buy a robust lathe. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> You can see I have a little bit of tear out on the grain here. Now I was just doing rough fast cuts, but that's where the tool carbide that you're using comes in. This is the completely square and flat cutter that Easywood makes. And then Easywood now has this relief cutter where the top is actually angled down a little bit. So that's the tool I'm going to use the rest of the way and that's going to get me a very, very smooth surface because I don't want to do a lot of sanding on this. Turn this on, make sure nothing's hitting. I'm going to bring the speed up a little bit because in this case speed does help. I can still see my shadow line. That's what I was trying to think of earlier. So I'm going to just bring this in and I'm going to start making small swinging cuts like this. And I'll come back and forth. There's no real grain direction on this thing so I don't have to worry about that too much. And I'm going to work my way down to where I have a smooth surface in one spot. Then I'm going to move on down and keep doing that until I have the ball, the sphere, completely smooth. So I stopped this for a second. I want to show you. You can see this big flat side here. I've yet to do this side. I've been over here doing this side. You can barely see a little flat mark here. 
what I'm doing is I'm just sneaking up, just taking a small amount of wood off each time until I get rid of the flat spot. It's not requiring me to have the ability and the skill to turn a sphere. I'm just removing the wood till it goes flat and at that point I have a sphere. That's why this is so doggone simple. I just love this kit. It is amazing. Let's start working on this side over here. Isn't that cool? Look how round that is. I could never do that. I'm terrible at making spheres. So the next thing is we have to turn it because we want to cut off these ends that are on here. So we have to get rid of these, but we can't hold it like this. And that's where Thomas Hackle's genius continues. He's figured out an answer for that. So I've put in a drive center now, which has a curve in it, which is great for that shape. And then over here, we're still using his live center that's in here but we're putting in a new piece which has cork on it and a curve. So this is really cool. So this comes up here. I'm gonna kind of straighten these up to where they're looking at me. I am pushing into this so it's nice and flat and seated. So when I bring this in and tighten it up, turn it on real quick and check it. Yeah, look, the sphere is perfect right there. And now all I have to do is cut away these bits. So I wanna start with the easy wood square and flat cutter this time and work it away again then I'll switch tools. So I'm starting at 80 grit. So I'm starting at... <laughs> so I'm starting at 80 grit. But you can see here, I put a little bit of um, chamois cloth, like you wipe your car down with on here because that's solid metal and it'll want to mar the wood. I noticed I got dimples last time. But anyway, this is gonna be fun. It's looking really good. <laughs> yeah. Remember, you gotta flip the ball, the sphere, so you can sand all spots on it. See, there we go, that looks good. Okay, and remember, I'm gonna work my way to 400 grit. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> Honestly, I cannot make a sphere for the life of me. And this system by Thomas Hackle is incredible. You still feel like you're a turner and you're making the decisions yourself, but the jig makes it so easy to make the decisions and make it look good. So this has such deep grooves on it. I'm gonna go with a wipe on Danish oil again, one of my favorites. Put that in there and see how it gets into the grooves really well. And I think I'm doing this backwards because I feel like Michael Jackson. I can only find one glove. <laughs> uh, anyway. We're just going to look at that. I, we talk about wood turners, porn, but oh my goodness, isn't that incredible? So this is an amazing project. I mean, this really, truly is spheres, 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 spheres for dummies. <laughs> I am just so happy it turned out so well. And my, I guess again, hats off to Thomas Hackle and his great skills. Hey, and remember this piece of wood you guys gave me so much grief about a long time ago? You say, what was the purpose on that? Well, guess what? Now it's art. Until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools, best in class carbide wood turning tools.